Thank you. 
Thank you for coming to the fifth night of the 42nd annual Palestine Cultural Festival. I am Sam al a member of the Palestinian American Coalition of San Francisco. I'm so pleased you're able to join us for our first ever virtual event, which is also the first week long event we've ever held. We're streaming this on our brand new website pack-sf.org and on our new YouTube channel and Facebook. We have great lineup for you. On Monday, we heard from our four amazing poets. On Tuesday, we learned about Palestinian cooking. Wednesday's show featured a tour of the New Palestine Museum US and an interview with an amazing Palestinian artist. Yesterday, we learned how to do dabke with Al Jadur Dabke Group. Tonight offers a great lineup of comedians. Saturday, tomorrow morning, features world known celebrities, both local and abroad, George Kordahi and Farooq Shami. And then, Saturday evening show will highlight some great local musicians. 
we close our event on Sunday with the first Palestinian member to serve in the House of Representatives, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, followed by a panel discussion moderated by Dr. Lobna Khatami with Dr. Rabab Abdelhadi, who is a professor at San Francisco State University and lawyer Diana Botto. She will be calling us directly from Palestine. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for watching us tonight. And of course, all of those who involved in making this week possible. Also, we want to acknowledge the reality that many in our community are hurting due to the economic slowdown brought on by the pandemic. To help them, we urge you to support Palestinian owned businesses. We also urge you to support our efforts as we continue to promote Palestinian culture and traditions and celebrate new and emerging artists who build on all that has become before as they break new ground. If you can, please donate to PAC-SF through our website to aid all that we do both in the Bay Area and back home. You will be seeing the link on the screen, so please click that and help us with your donation. Also, would like to thank Fadi Hanani for allowing us to use his beautiful production of Mautini Song, which was released here at our virtual festival. And of course, we cannot thank enough Nabila Mango and all members of Aswat Ensemble for allowing us to use all the amazing background music you've heard every night before and after each show. If you want to see more of their music that was played at their virtual concert, it was October 24th and 25th please visit their Facebook page, Aswat Ensemble. Please remember to share this live broadcast. Invite your friends and don't forget to like our page so we can keep you posted on our future events. It's Friday the 13th, and not only that, it's the year 2020, so it can't get any better. But look at you all gathering here to watch some comedy. Don't you love being an Arab? It's great. We can't go wrong, it's comedy. So tonight we have a great lineup of comedians for you, including Mike Smail, Sami Abed, Najdi Faris, and Marina Riyad, along with the host, the one and only Amr Zahar. Amr is an Arab American comedian, speaker, writer, academic, and a professor at University of Detroit Mercy School of Law. He draws on his experiences growing up as a child of Palestinian immigrant parents, performing and lecturing on topics like politics, society, Islam, growing up Arab, and more. Amir also served as a surrogate for the presidential candidate Bernie Sanders in 2016 and 2020. He founded and produced the first ever 1001 Laughs Ramallah Comedy Festival, he also produced the 1001 Laughs in Dearborn at the Arab American National Museum. He also produced his first documentary film, We're Not White, a comedic and informative approach to the Arab American struggle to get a box on the United States census form. He's also the author of a well-read blog, The Civil Arab. If you haven't joined it, make sure you do as well as his first book, Being Palestinian Makes Me Smile, a collection of his writings relating to being Palestinian. Amir holds an MA in Middle East Studies and the JD, it's a law degree, both from the University of Michigan in Arbor. He writes and speaks widely on political and social affairs and has appeared on radio and television, including ABC's Politically Incorrect with Bill Mayer. And now I'll hand it to you, Amr. All right. Well, thank you, Samir. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here uh, today. I am happy to be with all of you. Thank you for reading that very, very, very long biography, which was uh, <laughs> written by my mother for my website. So I appreciate all of you. All right. Everyone who's out there in our audience here, please make sure you open up your mics. Turn on your cameras. We want to have interaction. We're very happy to be here. And thanks to all the people watching out there in the world as well. Well, yes, 
It is a crazy time. I'm sure everybody's last couple of weeks has been pretty, you know, uneventful. Not that much happened in America. It's been pretty uh, quiet. You know, we haven't had much going on. But uh, finally, it seems like maybe we're moving on from. Trump. I don't like the. I don't like to say his name. Trump. How did the Arab? Trump. Trump. Ukushna. <laughs> <laughs> no more Trump, Kushner. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We still don't know yet. We'll see. But, but, <laughs> like finally, we're moving. I mean, I don't know. I'm not that happy with Biden either. I told everybody that, you know, I'm not a real religious dude, but I do know that in uh, Islam, pork is forbidden. Uh, but <laughs> if you are in the middle of the desert, and there's no other choices, and you're in extreme hunger, and you don't have too much, and you don't enjoy it, <laughs> then you are allowed to have a ham sandwich in order to survive. So Biden is- Or a snake. Or are people, are, are people participating? Do people know? <laughs> Listen, who said that? Welcome to the show. Naima. <laughs> okay, Naima, Naima, let me tell you something. Can, can you put Naima on the screen for a second so everybody understands what we're dealing with here? Please oh, put it on the screen. Um, Naima is a, uh, Naima, Chato uh, Naima, let me explain to you how a comedy show works. I mean, maybe you haven't. We talk. We love. Okay, we talk, you listen. Listen, <laughs> listen how people can hear her. Listen, I know this is a virtual work. We talk, you laugh, you don't participate. Uh, this is why I hate doing comedy shows in front of Arabs because they participate all the time. It's really, <laughs> you know, like I'll be doing a comedy show and I'll say Arabs can't say the letter P, so we always say uh, uh, Palestine and Bible and pizza, and somebody from the audience will yell Pepsi. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know there's other, ones. I know there's other examples. <laughs> Naima, we love you. We're very happy that you're here. I love you too, Amr. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. See, when you put her on the screen, she got all nervous. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, uh, but we are here and we're happy. I wish we were there in person. One of my favorite events to do every year, and I'm lucky enough to do it, is to come out to San Francisco or Foster City, wherever the festival is, and to participate because we do have one of the most amazing Palestinian communities and Arab communities out there in the Bay Area in San Francisco. You guys are amazing. But I tell you, I come from Michigan. And um, this is just like the Midwest where we don't, nobody, there's no um, communist charging us for our plastic bags <laughs> at the supermarket. <laughs> um, they give them to us for free. Uh, in fact, out here in Michigan, they're just like, would you like me to triple plastic bag that for you? I'm like, yes. <laughs> Can all of you people in California explain the, the cult that you're a part of in California? I went, I went out to eat, okay. <laughs> okay, I don't know if it's weird. In Michigan, okay, when you go to a restaurant and then you want to throw away your food, the trash can has one hole. <laughs> There's just one hole in the trash can. <laughs> I, went to, I went to California and there are three holes. In the, can somebody explain to me the cult that you are a part of? There's a circle, an oval, and a rectangle, and they have different colors. No sign, no direction as to what it's you're a, supposed to do with these things. It's, it's just a part of the folks from Michigan. You're, yeah, okay, why are people participating? Just la just let me do my job. You're saving the planet. Uh, it's a puzzle for the Michigan folks. Oh, I see, I see. Can we stop? Can we just cancel? I'm, I'm okay to cancel this one. I'm okay to cancel the show. <laughs> oh my god! But someone needs to explain. I mean, you guys, you guys obviously know what these things mean—the the oval and the the rectangle and the circle. I don't know, and they have colors and green and yellow and blue and red. I don't. Know. I just put everything in the in the green circle. I don't really. I just everything goes in the green circle, and I went up. It was Panda Express. Like really, at Panda Express, we're worried about the environment. Okay, I just ate like three pounds of fried food that was fried in oil that's been there for five years, and now they're worried about which like freaking receptacle I put my garbage in. Mm -hmm. You guys in California need to chill out, mm -hmm. chill out. Especially in, California, especially in California, when when somebody uh, um, when I tell someone I live in Michigan, you know, it's so cold in Michigan. That's what all the cows. <laughs> How do you do that? It's so cold. It's just cold. You know what happens here? Mm -hmm. It gets cold. You know what doesn't happen here? 
You don't wake up in the middle of the night because the house is shaking and about to fall <laughs> off the side of the cliff, all right? That doesn't happen here, all right? It just gets cold. You put on a sweater like an adult and you go outside, all right? <laughs> like all right? That's, you don't the earthquake. When it, <laughs> <clears throat> we really have to set the room for all these Arabs yelling in the audience, please. Maybe the audience was a bad idea. <laughs> All You're right. doing great. Keep going. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the reinforcement. <laughs> <laughs> well, you told us not to say anything, so we're just like... Oh, my God. It's still happening. <laughs> we're actually taking it easy on you because you're a guest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go watch the Adams Family when I'm done. <laughs> I wish this was real. Actually, I wish... I wish this was. I wish we were at a checkpoint in Palestine because I would just point at all of you and be like, "It's him," <laughs> him. and I would not start a campaign for you. And I don't care. All right, I don't care how long they hold you. All right. Well, if you're with us, we're gonna get a VIP pass. Still doing. It. All right, let's move on to the show. I'll let the rest of the comedians deal with this. Um, <coughs> So we have a great lineup of Palestinian comedians tonight. I'm very, very, very excited to bring all of these comedians with us tonight. They're from joining us from all around the uh, country. Our first comedian is a comedian who I have taken to Palestine with me a number of times. We have traveled around America and around the world, and he is joining us all the way from Virginia tonight. Please, please, let's hear a big hand for Mike Ismail. Yay. Thanks. Thanks, guys. It's so awesome to be a part of the Palestinian Cultural Festival. I had been to San Francisco once with Amara. That was a few years ago, and it was amazing. I know that's where a lot of you guys are. So uh, I'm in Southern Virginia. Is the white guy on the, on the phone? Yeah. yeah, okay. That's exactly what I'm about to hear. We'll talk about that. It's so white where I am right now. Uh, we're, if we if we were trying to have a Palestinian cultural festival in Virginia, Southern Virginia, it would be like me, my mom, my two sisters, and my brother, and half my kids. Half my kids. <laughs> I mean, this is my this is virtual comedy is weird. It's my first virtual comedy show. Um, COVID has made everything kind of weird, even the holidays. Like we just had Halloween, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of people, a lot of Arabs, don't like participate in Halloween my kids wanted to and uh, my kids uh, my youngest said, youngest said he wanted to be a ghost and I said no no uh, Palestinians don't believe in ghosts we you can't you can't possibly believe in ghosts because if because the theory behind ghosts is that ghosts are stuck between worlds with unfinished business like if they were really Palestinian ghosts wouldn't like every Israeli household be occupied by a Palestinian ghost haunting the hell out of them? Hell yeah. They would. That's exactly right. They would. Heck yeah. so, we can't, so ghosts, uh, we can prove right now, ghosts are not real. They're not real. They can't be. But if they were real and there were Palestinian ghosts, they wouldn't be like American ghosts. Because American ghosts, they're like, boo, that's what they do. And Palestinian ghosts would be like, Ilan Abu, would be a whole different kind of boo. <laughs> situation maybe <laughs> something like that <laughs> that's what i would think that's what i think if we actually but i don't believe they actually we actually have ghosts but and covid isn't really not all that bad when you think about the holidays because typically during the holidays people always have those work parties where your friends who normally can't cook or bake just started bringing baked goods to work they're troublesome baked goods if you and then they try to pawn them off on you like hey have you tried my fudge you're like ah i'm trying not to get diarrhea for christmas this year if that's all right with you buddy i'm not uh, it's always the they're always chasing after you to get to try the food and so so i'm glad that's been ended that's not good so what else my kids my kids are half white because i married white uh and a lot of arabs don't like that they don't like that i married white they wanted me to stay in the culture uh, but good news is I divorced white too. So we're okay now. We're even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but, 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 you know, listen, here's the deal about, about before though, it wasn't that bad. Listen, you have to think about it because if anything crazy went down in America and we had to get ready, I already had a hostage ready to go. You guys didn't, you had to look for one. So I was ready to go. 
A lot of white people don't like that joke, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, but it's funny. I love white people. Uh, but you, you have to in Southern Virginia. You have to love white people. Because when you're one of the only white Arab people that they know, they treat you like they just found a unicorn. They treat you so special. It's the craziest thing. They're like, you know, you're at a party, you're at an event. They want to show you off. They're excited. They're like, hey, mm -hmm. this is my friend, Mike. His real name is Mac Mood. He's an Arab. <laughs> like, you know, like, like they just found something special. They're like, hey, but it's okay. He's one of the good ones. We, we had him pre-checked. <laughs> so they always want to <laughs> make sure they, they show you off to their friends. But, you know, but whenever I'm with my white friends, and I have a lot of them because that's where I live, and we're at a coffee shop, and I'm the only brown guy in the group. If another brown guy comes towards the table, I get jealous. Because I'm mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. Because you know they're not keeping more than one of us around at any given time. <laughs> they're they're going to get rid of one of us if we come over here. I'm like, hey, 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 hey. You find your own white people. I found these myself. I had to drink <laughs> a lot of pumpkin spice lattes to get them to think I'm one of the good ones. So you just back off. This is my, <laughs> this is my white person. <laughs> Amr calls me, uh, somebody else just said it. Amr calls me uh, his white Arab friend, his white Palestinian friend. And, and I don't know if there's a lot of people that are watching that get that because we're not professional Palestinians. We're not professional Arabs. We're, we're weak on the language. Maybe a little weak on the culture sometimes. Let me just say this. We're important. The, the amateur Arab or the white Arab, we're very important because white people and Americans can be very uncomfortable around us. And they need, you know, it's like calculus. You can't just jump into calculus. You got to have like some intro rem remedial courses. That's what we are. We're yeah. like Arab 101 for the uh, white people. That's what we do. We walk in, we introduce them to the <laughs> basics, like uh, we introduce them to the food. Like, hey, hey, try this shawarma. And they're like, hey, this is pretty good. That's right. It is good. Try this falafel. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. This is pretty good. This is like Arab hush puppies. That's right. These are Arab hush puppies, Ricky. Enjoy them. <laughs> they're terrific. <laughs> they love it. Then they move on to Arab 201, and they meet your mom, and they make, they make a friend named Ahmed. Suddenly, they're like, hey, this is all right. What's this Mac Luba? It's good. Enjoy it. It's a good time. Have some fun. Move on to Arab 301. They're like, hey, you know what? This Sharia law ain't bad. Easy, Ricky. White people don't like that. Settle down on the Sharia. It's not good. <laughs> um, I mentioned the, um, he mentioned the election. The election was a weird time. If you're Palestinian, the election had to be weird for you because you really didn't have a lot of good options uh, with the election. You had uh, Biden and you had uh, Trump. You know, it's funny because a lot of and a lot of white people and Americans don't like to talk politics. But Ooh. Arabs, we love it. We love talking politics. You bring mm -hmm. it up to an Arab, you're like, yes, let's talk. Let's go. Yalla, let's go. You know, maybe we talk Clinton, Buttigieg, uh, maybe the Jewish guy. I like the Jewish guy. He's not bad. He's very nice for the Jewish guy. He's a good guy. Uh, they, they'll talk, but, you know. But we didn't have a lot of options. Like Biden, you know, like, I don't know if you watched the victory speech Biden had. It was at the Chase Center. And you could actually see at times the Chase Bank logo behind him, which I think is incredibly important. So you know who his sponsors are. So that's really, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good to know these things in advance. He didn't hide that. And then Trump, that guy, he can't accept it. He's like a jilted boyfriend. Like he is so... And he's like, he can't handle it, right? He's so messed up about it. You know, he's going to start driving by the White House in the middle of the night, drunk dialing the White House and hanging up when somebody answers. Like, he just can't get past it. <laughs> so just, this is, this is going to be his life for at least two years, maybe three. It's so embarrassing. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, I did mention my name. My name is Mahmoud. Uh, um, I don't know if we have other name Mahmouds in the, uh, on, the, on the feed watching, but uh, what's up? Um, but I go by Mike, uh, because I live in Virginia and, uh, I came by that name, honestly, at the time that I came by Mike, I was actually living in Mississippi and, um, I was eight years old and we had just come back from Palestine. My dad had us, I was there for about a year and I went to, uh, we lived in Mississippi and the little redneck children didn't know how to say Mahmoud. They were a little bit thrown off and it was like, so what's your name? And I was like, Mahmoud. And they're like, Miss Mac, what? No, it's Mahmoud. And it's just the, we went around and around for a while after this. And finally, they were just like, we're just going to call you Mac, if that's all right. I was like, that's fine. You can call him Mac. They're like, what's his name? And my brother, my brother's name, Hussein, or here you might say Hussein. They're like, well, his name is Hussein. And they're like, what? Like, it's Hussein. They're like, Hussein? 
was like, no, no, it's Hussein. And they're like, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, y'all. I think they're Mexicans. Come on, we can play with them. Let's go. <laughs> For sure. They didn't know what the hell we were. You know, they were just like, they were just as long as they could somehow fit us into their, you know, their world, we were okay. But I did, um, I don't know about anybody else. Amr um, will talk about this too. Uh, we agreed on this, to this topic. Ancestry DNA. Anybody, if you've never done Ancestry DNA, make some noise in the, the group that's actually in, if you've done it, make some noise. No? Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. You know, it's typically not even for us. It is for white people. It is like their thing because white people desperately want to be something besides white, you know, because it's embarrassing. I don't know if you've been like, because you want to be, if you want to have some flavor, you're just desperate to try to find out what flavor you might be, but they don't want too much flavor. Maybe the worst they ever want to be is like Irish or Italian. That's about it. Maybe, you know, a little bit Cherokee. They will go for that sometimes. It makes them happy to feel like they're not totally just white. Um, mm -hmm. But I took it. I did the answer to DNA. I did it. And uh, now, for those of you that took it, well, the cool thing about it is, is you can find on Ancestry, if you're connected to other family members, if somebody you, who's related to you has taken it, you get a notification on your page and it tells you if to some degree of certainty, if you're related to somebody, maybe as a cousin, a fourth cousin, a fifth cousin, a seventh cousin. So it's kind of cool. And here's what's crazy. I found out that I have a potential seventh cousin in Alabama named Dale White. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I looked at, I clicked on the leaf and it said seventh cousin Dale White. And I was like, dude, that is awesome. That's awesome that, you know, cause I'm Palestinian. We're welcoming. We put our arms around people. I'm like, this is awesome. I got a, I got a, a cousin possibly named Dale in Alabama. That's amazing. <laughs> then I thought about Dale seeing his notification, <laughs> click, clicking on his notification, seeing Mahmoud Ismail. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Dale had to just crap his pants right there. Dale was probably like, <laughs> Mahmoud. He had, he had like all the thoughts right there. It's like, hey, wait a minute. What does this mean? Am I a sleeper cell? Like, you know, Dale, you know, but, but here's the thing. Now, those of you that took the test, did you, if you opted in, did you opt in to allow people who are related to you to email you because you can do that you can opt in and have them email you and so i thought i'm going to email dale so i just emailed him and all i said was dear dale welcome to the watch list Mahmoud. <laughs> that's all i did <laughs> but that was enough <laughs> to be hospitable welcome him in you know so here's what's crazy Two weeks later, I went on and I looked for Dale's profile. It was gone. It was totally gone. <laughs> Dale said, I'm out of here. I'm not doing this anymore. Hey, guys, thank you so much. That's all I've got for you tonight. Appreciate right. your time tonight. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you, man. I want to thank Mike from joining us from a place that, I mean, obviously, it's very hot. It would take a sip of water every two minutes out there in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Thanks, Mike. For joining us, I want to. Can can you put it back on Mike for a second? I want to thank Mike from joining us um, from what is clearly the place where he makes the terrorist videos to go out. I mean, what is, <laughs> I'm just I'm just waiting for the next. I'm sure. By the way, if you guys all follow Mike, I'm sure you can expect the next video that comes out tonight from Mike's page right after the Palestinian American Coalition of San Francisco Facebook Live event. It's just going to be Mike putting out the same video. You know, I am very unhappy here in Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. Thank you very much, man. Love you. Love you for doing this. Thanks so much for doing this for our community. And, um, you know, Mike was, Mike was talking about how sometimes we Arabs, you know, we get away. People think we're white, you know, and they're surprised when they find out that we're not white and that we're, it happens to me, but people, 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 when they find out, <laughs> when they find out that I'm Arab, <laughs> They use they treat me like I just told them that I came out of the closet. You know, like that's the way they talk to me. You know, like, you know, oh, you're Arab. My friend Mo is Arab. You guys should hang out sometime. You know, <laughs> <with> each other. <laughs> it's not great. All right. Our next comedian joining us tonight is a very, very funny female Palestinian comedian joining us tonight, all the way from Texas. 
please. She has joined me in Dearborn before. She's very funny. Please put it together for the very funny Marina Riyadh. Woo! Hey, everyone. Thank you, Amr. Um, my name is Marina Riyadh. Um, Marina is actually Russian and Spanish and Riyadh is Arabic. Um, I've come to, found, to find out those are three things that Americans are terrified of. So <laughs> I've yet to figure out which ethnicity I want to go with. You know, it depends on the situation. Uh, fun fact, my actual <laughs> last name is Hussein. So, salam alaikum, brother. Um, except I'm not Thanks. like you. I'm hiding that shit, okay? I'm not telling <laughs> anyone about that. My career would stop before it even started. Um, I actually, I, um, thank you for introducing me that I'm from Texas. Um, I've actually spent the majority of my life in two third world countries, Palestine and East Texas. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not familiar with geography, um, it's like the hillbillies, like super, super, super country. <laughs> like you think that you married into white. I came from a town called white Oak. It's named after the people of the tree. Okay? It wasn't called Muslim Oak. That wasn't what was happening. Yeah. It, was Oak. it was White Oak. Um, mm. People, I mean, I've been here for 16 years. I grew up in Palestine and I moved here. I was, um, I think, kidnapped, but who's calling it? Um, <laughs> I came here uh, when I was, I, I was like 10 and um, people always ask me, they're like, Marina, you know, why did you choose Texas? You know, of all the countries, why did you choose Texas? Um, <laughs> in Texas, it's like a state of mind, you know, like it's really not a state anymore. It's like we're a country, we're doing our own thing. And if you've never been to Texas, my answer, I'm going to be honest with you, is I'm here for the guns. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, when the weed kicks in, I might, stay, I, might, I might stay for that. But so far, it's just been the guns. It's amazing here. Um I went back to Palestine about <laughs> a couple of years ago. First of all, let me say this. I'm, I've been here, like I grew up around white people exclusively. I think that's like a thing of pride for me, you know? Um, I know them like the back of my hand, but uh -huh. I was like, you know what? I'm Arab, I'm Arab through and through. Like I, I eat za'atar, I eat zayt, I have khubiz at home. Like I'm, I know I'm sakhin and makhubiz, okay? I go back to Palestine and I could not be whiter. Could not. My mother like yells at me and I'm like, where is the U.S. Embassy? How do I call? Like, I <laughs> <laughs> I, that was a thought that came. I was like, girl, you're in Palestine. That's the last place the U.S. would help a Palestinian is in Palestine. What do you even? I didn't connect the dots. OK, mm -hmm. but um, once I escaped Palestine and I came back here, um, <laughs> I got to go back with um, my wait for this white boyfriend what's up? Um, I have my own hostages too, you know? So, <laughs> I don't judge me. We all make mistakes, but I did date a white guy. So there's that. I'm going to go to hell for that one. Um, <laughs> my mom always, I mean, my parents are very conservative. Okay. I'm the eldest of six children. I know that's like on the low end, but don't judge me. So I'm the eldest of six children. Um, I've met the other five and they're fucking pathetic. I know I'm not supposed to curse, but this is very appropriate. <laughs> I think I see a family in the corner. Ziad, are you guys a family? Like, what's going on? <laughs> are there any siblings in there? Or are you guys just quarantining together? Sibling. I'm so sorry, okay? Because whoever the eldest is clearly the boss. Um, that's me. My brother wants to be a housewife, and my sister is a hippie, okay? So... I am killing the game right now, which is why my dad literally calls me every night. He's always like, Marina, where are you and what are you doing? <laughs> and listen, when you're the best, somebody like I'm an investment. OK, like the, the, the cleaner I am, the, they can sell me off higher. You know, you, you know, the numbers. OK, so I, I'm always like I'm at home doing laundry and dishes. Um, it doesn't matter what I was actually doing. The problem is that now we're in quarantine. I'm actually stuck at home doing laundry and dishes, which <laughs> I think that was like Allah's way of like, okay, get your life together. That's not, you can't live your life like that anymore. You can't be out at night, every night doing comedy and stuff. Um, when I told my mom about my white boyfriend, um, I chose the optimal time, uh, Thanksgiving. 
I was like, mom, you know, <laughs> I have to go spend time with this white man's family during Thanksgiving. It's a <laughs> And when I told her about him, I was like, it, I just want to let you know, like, he did go to Israel, but he's not Jewish. And I was like, <gasps> she was like, he's a, he's a Yahudi. I'm like, no, mom, I promise you he's not Jewish. Like, he just looks like it. I promise you. Like, it's a thing in their family. Um, that was like the worst thing I could have ever done is in, in telling her that that man has been to Israel. But I eventually convinced her to let him come to the family, like house for Thanksgiving, even though we don't do anything about Thanksgiving. Um, we have Maklube as a turkey, okay? So <laughs> he comes over and instantly, like, I didn't grow up with the community, okay? I don't know what, I'm not sensible. I don't know what in the world to do or not to do, okay? And he meets my family and it's like instantly, she's like, you're standing close to him. Are you going to marry him? What's, why are you so close to him? Haram, like, I you can't be that close to him. And I was like, okay, I'm going to back up six feet away, COVID, I get it, whatever. Um... So I, I stand away from him and she's like, what, you don't even like him? Why is he even here? Do you even know this man? You're just bringing a stranger that you don't, clearly don't love him. I'm like, oh my God, what do you want me to do? Um, and here's the thing. I thought the relationship was going well, uh, especially because I got him to convert. That was like a really high point in, my, in our relationship. The problem was I got him to convert back to Christianity. Um, <laughs> I don't know what did it. Maybe it was a Thanksgiving dinner, but he was like, Marina, he, he sat me down for this. And he was like, Marina, I have something to tell you. I was like, okay, so you cheated on me. Let's move on. What, what's, what happened <laughs> next? He was like, no, um, I'm a Christian. I was like, I know. I thought we're, we've moved past that. What's, what's going on? He was like, no, no, no. I can't do this Muslim thing. I was like, okay, thank you very much for this. Because here's the thing. I told him, I was like, you know, the number, like, I would rather you cheat on my, my number one thing, right, with men, especially white men, is, like, I can't catch you eating pork. Like, that's, I was, like, that's the worst thing that you could ever do, and somehow it got worse. <laughs> I was, like, we were, we were on the right path here. Um, <laughs> I, I started dating Arab guys. Uh, clearly, if you, don't, if you didn't catch the story, he's my ex now. Um, it didn't work out. So I started dating Arab guys, and I literally realized, I was, like, the worst thing with Arab guys is they smoke hookah, like, nonstop. Like, that's... They don't even breathe air anymore. Um, and usually with them, you're like, oh, so the smoking thing, is this long-term, short-term? Like, how long is this going on for? And with white guys, when you're dating them, it's like, so this bacon thing, you know, is this long-term, short-term? <laughs> how long are you planning on being an infidel? Like, I, I, need, I, have, I have to go tell my parents the answers to these questions when I'm done here. Um, I... I always thought that like I was Arab, um, except when I was in East Texas, because everyone always spoke Spanish to me for some reason. Um, <laughs> you say Amar that we pass as white. I pass as Mexican. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> um, but when I moved to Dallas, Texas, everyone just thought I was like an angry Jew from New York. <laughs> I don't know if it's my face or my bitchy attitude, but that's just a conflict of interest. And I don't appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think the most, here's the thing, I'm going to tell you a little story. Okay. It just happened to me recently. Okay. I went out to go get some groceries. I came back. My apartment was on fire. Okay. Oh. It was on fire. No, don't awe me. Okay. It wasn't my fault. I oh. thought it was for a second, but then I realized I haven't cooked in two months. So <laughs> couldn't have been me. Um, so <laughs> I get home and like my house, like it's, it's gone. The apartment above me was on fire. It went down, stuff happens. I'm not an architect. I don't know how fire works. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm like freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, is the building going to fall? Is the ceiling going to crash? Like what's happening? And this like firefighter, he's like, oh my God, like everything's fine. It's fine. It's just, there's water and fire damage, but everything's fine. And I'm like, okay, I need to see my apartment. You know, like I have so many valuable things in there. I need to get in there now. And I'm like running through there as if it's like an action movie, but I literally just like made a couple of steps, okay? But I'm like freaking out. I get in there and my first thought, my first thought was like, oh my God, I didn't do the laundry. <laughs> the dishes are still piled up in the sink. That was my, I was like, I'm so sorry, sir. Like, I know you have to put out this fire, but I really, I never like this. Like, I usually always put my laundry and put it up. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I know that you have to clean this up, but 
please don't judge me. Like I was going to come back and do the dishes. I just have to go get some groceries. This guy looked at me like I was psycho. I was like, if my mother walked in here, what would she say about me? Oh, like clearly you're never going to get married. I mean, how could you hire and your dishes are still piled up? That's the stuff my mother would say to me. Um, but I, I, I was able to like grab the things that I had that were really important. And I'm like, I mean, I just graduated college like 10 years ago. So um, <laughs> like, uh, the only thing I had valuable was like my Palestinian passport and my like, my, like Zatar that was important for Palestine. Like that shit like is irreplaceable. So I went in and I grabbed that and I grabbed some sweaters because I'm too fat now from quarantine. I was like, great. I don't have to pack any clothes. That's perfect. And I ran out of the apartment and I look back and it's just, I was like, I'm in shock. Okay. And the only thing that came to my mind, I was like, oh my God, these men are so hot. Like <laughs> when they talk <laughs> about firefighters in movies, I, no one, everyone talks about the fire. Not enough credit goes to the firemen because this sexy <laughs> black man was just like, ma'am, are you going to be okay? I was like, I don't, am I going to be okay? I don't know. Like I may not make it. How are you doing today, sir? How was your day? <laughs> I, was, I took my mask off. I was like, I don't usually look like this. It's been a rough day for me. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry about the dishes. I was going to get to them, I promise you. What's your name? That was my conversation with this man that was trying to like rescue my life. That there was no life to be rescued. Everything was fine. It was just a little flood damage. Um, but I think that's when you realize how Arab you are. It's like in the middle of a fire, you're like, I got to do the dishes or I want to get a husband. So there's that. Um, I love you guys. Thank you guys for having me. Um, thank you, Amr. And Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Marina. Yay. Great job. Thank you, Marina. That is Marina Riyadh, everybody, joining us again from Texas. A lot of people don't understand. I never understood why there was a lot of Arabs in the South. There's a lot of Arabs in the South of America. And I never really understood that until I went there. I did a show in Tennessee and there was like 500 people in a room in Tennessee, like all Arabs. And I did my show and when I was hurt. done. When I was done, I was like, what are you guys, what are you guys doing here? Why do you live here? You know, like, I know we're not that popular down here. I watch Fox News. I know we're not that popular. And then after it, a guy explained it to me very well. He explained it very clearly. He goes, Amir, we live here. Let me tell you why. First, the weather is very nice, just like it is back home. Uh, second, you can take a gun with you wherever you want to go. Okay. And um, third of all, you can marry your cousin and nobody cares. You know, so. <laughs> now I understand. All right, our next comedian joining us tonight, he is hilarious, man. When I brought him here to Dearborn for our festival uh, last year, he tore down the house. I can't wait to do so many more things with him. He's performed a lot in D.C. He's been on The Moth before, an NPR show, and he's done all kinds of stuff. He's originally here from Michigan, but he's joining us from D.C. Please put it together for the very funny Mejdi Faris. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. I'm at you're going to be very proud of me. Last week, I took my dad to vote for the first time in his life. Wow. First time ever. Um, of course, we voted for uh, Joe Biden, or as we call him in Dearborn, Vice President Yusuf Baidun. <laughs> uh, the whole process took like three minutes, and I recorded the whole thing. And the lady that was working the polls was like, oh, is he a first time voter? I was like, yeah. I was like a proud parent. I was like, yeah. <laughs> she was like, how long has he been in America? I was like, 53 years. <laughs> <laughs> He's been busy. Yeah. <laughs> but that's my dad. He's very old school. He grew up in the West Bank. I got to know him on a different level over quarantine we spent a lot of time together he told me some stories every day on his way to school overseas he would see you know tanks in the streets smoldering buildings he'd smell tear gas in the air he promised himself he'd make it to america one day where all men are created equal so he worked hard saved every penny it wasn't enough he worked even more his family chipped in and he finally had enough money to fly overseas and land 
in the land of the free to pursue his liberty. And uh, unfortunately, he landed in Detroit during the riots. It was 1967. My dad got off the plane. He saw the tanks in the streets, the smoldering buildings. And then he smelled the tear gas. And he was like, I want the refund. <laughs> False advertisement. <laughs> and then he started teaching the rioters how to throw. He was like, use your hips, Jojo. Use your hips. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man. <laughs> you learn to love your dad a lot more at a, you know, as you get older. And I think a lot of people, when they talk about, when, especially comedians, when they talk about their Arab dads, they always talk about how their dads used to hit them with a slipper. And I wish my dad hit me with a slipper. I mean, like my punishment was never physical in nature when I was young. When I misbehaved, my dad forced me to watch Arabic satellite news. <laughs> <laughs> now, Arabic satellite news isn't like American news, okay? We don't have any feel-good stories. You won't find any water skiing squirrels on dish. It's graphic, okay? And if you're seven years old, it's like clockwork orange psychological warfare. And I wasn't allowed to look away because every time I did, my dad would say, shuf, which means look, if you don't know. Shuf, politician, explosion. Shuf, politician, explosion. Shuf, 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 And I was like, dad, I'm, I'm, I'm shoofing, okay, I can't. <laughs> I can't shoot any harder than this, Dad. I'm shooting. <laughs> but he didn't care. One hour later, oh, you make me want to shoof, shoof, and shoof, shoof, and shoof, shoof, and shoof, and shoof, and shoof. And I'm just like, okay, Dad, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry for what I did. Can we change the channel now, please? I'm sorry. I don't want to. I don't want to watch this anymore. And my mom was like, "Halas, he had enough." But my dad didn't care. One hour later, shoof, that's the shoof, shoof, Surya, shoof. Shuf Beirut, Shuf, Shuf Yemen, Shuf, Shuf Mosul, Shuf, Shuf, Walak Shuf, Walak Shuf, Walak Shuf. And I'm like, at this point, I'm just convulsing. Like, I can't Shuf anymore, Dad. I can't Shuf anymore. And my mom's like, Halas, he had enough. He had enough. And uh, my dad, after three hours of watching the Middle East be torn apart like a piñata filled with oil. My dad changed the channel to Sanford and Son, and the punishment was over. And my dad, my mom walked me out to the doorway, and I had a tear in my eye. And I looked back at my dad, and I was like, Dad, next time, please, please, next time, can you just hit me with a hafaya like all the other normal kids? <laughs> but he's a lot softer now than he used to be. He has a, he has a, he has a new son. I have a new brother. See, my dad remarried and had a kid at the age of 70. So now my dad is 74 with a four-year-old. His name is Wasim, but I call him a Cialistinian. Cialistinian. <laughs> <laughs> I should call him Wasim, but he's half Palestinian, half Cialist. So I'm going to call him a Cialistinian. <laughs> and uh, these two, they're best friends. You know, they wake up at the same time, 1230. They get cranky at the same time. They take naps at the same time. They eat soft foods together. They're like, they're like best friends. And this little Seattle City, he's like, he's a carbon copy of my dad. Like, it's, it's really weird watching this little mini version of my dad because he listens to Um Kalthum when he colors. He, he wears like four shine. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. This is all true. He wears four shine loafers to the park uh, and a gold watch. And, and he blames everything on Israel. <laughs> He's four years old. Fills with milk. 
all that. I mean, you come over. If anyone out there is doing a documentary on, on Seattleistinians, there's thousands of them. I can give you a profile on one if you'd like. Yeah. Um, but he, he's, he's, he's born and raised in Michigan. He's going to need ESL classes, Haram. Uh, he, doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't speak English very well. And he doesn't have to. He says stuff to me like, it's really slime. Like, what, what kind of a sentence is that? <laughs> Anyways, I try to teach him big words. Like, the other day, I was, I was watching TV with him, and I was like, this, is, this word is integrate. It means to join. You know what I mean? Like, you integrate two things. And can you use that in a sentence, Wasim? He was like, no. Nah, yeah, my English teacher good, that's integrate. <laughs> that's not, not how it works. <laughs> Uh, the worst part, I think, about having a new brother is that, like, I, I don't have children. And my dad keeps telling me, yeah, let's I just have kids before it's too late. I'm like, too late? What well, seems four years old? <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, it's been fun hanging out with my dad. It's It hasn't, like... I, I try to focus on the positive. There's been some positive things this year. I did. I got a new job. Um, I want to quit, but I do have a new job. This was the first. <laughs> this was the first. This was my first interaction with my new job. It took place over Zoom. Okay. This is the. It was my first. My first two minutes with with this HR lady who is uh, an overshare. She was like, could you repeat that for me one more time? I'm really bad with names and I don't want to butcher it. Is it Maggi? Did I say that right? You know, I went to school with a Majid. Is that the same thing? Do you know him? He was Egyptian. What's your heritage? Oh, you're Palestinian? Hmm. It's a shame what's happening over there. But, you know, they've been fighting for thousands of years. Since the biblical days, actually. And, and you know what I want to know is, with all that fighting, who's taking care of the animals? That's what I want to know. You know, when I think about all of those cats and dogs that have been forced out of their homes, living in the streets, it just feels like the world has forgotten about them. Don't you agree? I'm like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> She's like, anyways... <laughs> It's so great to have some diversity around here, but do you have a nickname or something? Can I call you Mark? How do I say your last name? I'm like, it's Ferris. She's like, no, how do you say it in Palestinia? I was like, <laughs> Fattis. She's like, fat ass? I'm like, no, you said fat ass. <laughs> fat. Like, that's what I said. You're, you're fat ass. You belong to the, to the fat ass family. Your dad's not <laughs> You come from a long line of fat asses. I understand. I get it. I get it. <laughs> and, uh, and, you, and your mother's maiden name? I was like, her, her maiden name is Arafat, but we say Arafat. Okay, so... So your dad's family is fat ass, and your mom's family are a, are fat. Okay, so they're fat asses, and they are are a fat. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I want to. <laughs> uh, but she did. She did. She did scare me though. Later in the converse, or later on, um, a few months later, she was like, "Hey." I heard what you call black people, and I have to say I don't agree. I was like, okay, let me explain. She was like, you call them asswads. And I was like, no. <laughs> asswad, is, asswad is just how we say black. It's just asswad. Asswad. Yes. You know what? Yeah, you're right. Asswads. <laughs> <laughs> like, We're going to work on it. I'm sorry. It was just Asswad. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. That's right. That's what you got it, guy. That's not that guy. Has <laughs> been killing me all night. <laughs> I don't know if he's explaining it to me or is he explaining it to someone else. I mean, no, he's he was explaining it to himself. You know, that's just what that's what. <laughs>
Um, by the way, we should start calling them s wads or s wads It's way better than, anyways. Definitely. Uh, I can't quit. I don't have enough money. I, I, I want more money. I'm not greedy. I just want to have enough money to be able to cancel my LinkedIn account. That's all I want. I don't want LinkedIn anymore. I can't stand it. Every time I'm on LinkedIn, I see the same stupid post. These are the differences between a boss and a leader. Bosses <laughs> use people and leaders develop them. Which one do you have? And I'm at home going, I have a boss. Stop reminding me every <laughs> day. Okay? That's not a nice thing to do to someone. Okay, I wouldn't go up to a homeless person and be like, excuse me, sir. These are the differences between a house and a tent. <laughs> Houses have indoor plumbing and insulation. Which one do you have? <laughs> That's not a nice thing to do. No. Um, I want to talk a little bit about my mom. My mom, uh, she taught me how to shop. I shop like an Arab. Uh, I'm a bargain hunter. Uh, see, I, I thought that everyone was a bargain hunter. I thought that most people shop like us, but it turns out mm -hmm. they don't. Most people shop for specific products regardless of the discount. We shop for specific discounts regardless <laughs> of the product. <laughs> product does not matter in my family. <laughs> <laughs> we, we <laughs> when we go shopping we don't know what we're going to come back with it could be a phone charger it could be a dodge charger it doesn't matter at all i mean if it's on sale <laughs> uh, my mom came home one day she was like you know i bought you something and and, and she handed me a tj maxx bag and i know i know she didn't give me a gift you know what i mean i know that this is a bargain she couldn't pass up on <laughs> and she doesn't know what to do with it so she gives it to someone else but i have to fake it okay so if you're ever in this situation don't take this away from your mother okay right. don't don't be like ma i don't need this and i'll be okay give your mom the satisfaction of the bargain like what i do i you grab the bag and you just play it off no matter what's in the bag oh mom for me thank you i've always wanted a single three pound dumbbell. <laughs> so much. Oh, this is great gains, young monk. Gains. That's part one. You give her the satisfaction. Part two, I have to play my mother's favorite game. Ma, this is a top shelf dumbbell. You must have paid a lot of money. <laughs> my mom's favorite game begins. Guess how much I pay. <laughs> Original price $12.99. Original price $12.99, huh? But guess how much I pay. <laughs> you got to start high, okay? There's no way you paid less than $10 for this dumbbell, man. There's no way. It's got neoprene non-slip grip. <laughs> Lower. $7? She's like, two for a dollar. I'm like, two for a dollar? Where's the other one? She's like, you only need one dumbbell, Habibi. Don't waste it. <laughs> oh my, God. my mama, one day she barged into my room when I was young, and she was like, yeah, La Macy's have a sale on lactose. Get in the car. I'm like, mom, it's pronounced Lacoste. She's like, I don't care. She doesn't care what it is. It's on sale, and that's it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, uh, Arabic is my second language I do speak it I don't speak it often uh, I only speak it when I'm in public and I want to tell a secret um, like one day I was out with my brother and I saw this really beautiful woman and I was like hey man it's a lush man ushuf mahla pink Dress. Not if on a bamut on a side boob. I look back over and she's just kind of shaking her head at me. And I was like, oh no. 
I think she speaks Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I grew up. I grew up in the in the Dearborn area where 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 Amir is. All right. Here's the thing: largest Arab American community in the country. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We're having a hard time assimilating. Okay, we are. <laughs> it is. It, it, <laughs> um, it you got to get used to it when you go to Dearborn. Like the last time I was in Dearborn, I called an Uber, and the driver was a Muslim woman. She was fully covered, and she pulled up got in the back seat and made me drive <laughs> I was like I was like that's not that's not how this works she was like you made the rules huh I'm sorry <laughs> the man have to drive Fadlan. I'm sorry you make the rules <laughs> I gave her five stars <laughs> Uh, I think that's my time. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate all your time. Thanks, Majdi. Great job, brother. Great job. Thanks so much. Uh, again, you know, one of the reasons we do these things is to make sure that um, not only, you know, fortunately, I've gotten to see the communities around the country a lot, but I want to make sure that uh, other Palestinian comedians like Marina, like Majdi are out there, too. Um, and uh, especially those two, they're just starting out. So if you're watching out there in the world and for all the people back in San Francisco, bring them to your events, let them make a career out of comedy and let them be entertaining us and telling our stories around the world. So keep doing that. Our next comedian coming up, you know, um, he doesn't live in Dearborn like I do, but he looks like he does, but he doesn't live in Dearborn like I do. I, you know, Mejdi was talking about, we live in Dearborn, it's true. And um, there, if you watch Fox News, and uh, I have an uncle who can't say Fox News. He also calls it Fuck Us News, which is kind of true. Anyway, but anyway, so <laughs> they say that we're trying to do Sharia law in Dearborn. That is not true. There's no Sharia law in Dearborn. Um, uh, there are about five or six ham shops. There's about <laughs> 40 churches. And from what I understand, there's about five or six strip clubs. And... <laughs> The only Sharia law I've ever seen in Dearborn is that the strip club serves halal wings. All right, that's the only thing. <laughs> They're delicious. They are. Oh, so you know, yeah. Nice They're delicious. By the way, you have to. By, I'm not mad at them. Okay, that's called customer service. All right, you should know your customers. You have to know your customers and treat them accordingly. By the way, that means, you know you know what that means? That means one day an Arab guy walked into the strip club. He goes, listen, let me get the same beer I had last week. You know, the one with the big, uh, and um, very important question. And, and I have a very important question. Is the chicken religiously certified halal? Okay, because if, if it is not, I don't think I can uh, eat it, okay? Oh, mm -hmm. and uh, Johnny Walker Black. <laughs> 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 All right. Our next comedian coming up. He is joining us as well. Another very, very funny Palestinian comedian. He's been doing comedy for a long time. He's traveled around the world. He's the host of 100 Humans on Netflix. Joining us all the way from California. Please help us welcome <laughs> to the Palestinian Cultural Festival, Sammy Obeid. <laughs> Thank you so much, Summer. Thank you so much. And what a year, 2020, right? This is the first year that we're, we, by law, have to wear masks in public places. And we've had curfews, you know, impacted on us many points this year. So one step closer to Sharia law. Just keep hanging in there. <laughs> we're going to get there. Uh, that was a joke. I know my face looks like actually would look like that, but no, that was a joke. Um, I am, uh, I'm Arab American. My, my uh, dad grew up in the Middle East. My mom grew up in the Middle East of Texas. So I am Arab and Texan. Um, Arab and Texan, it's a great combination. Arab and Texan, my blood is pure oil. Um, <laughs> Arab and Texan, I put the y'all in yalla. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it, it is interesting that a lot of Americans still don't know much about Palestinians. And you can't blame them because if you look at the, it's always people know a culture by who's famous from it. You know, like if you look at the famous Palestinians in history, we got, yes, yeah, sir, are you fat? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Jesus. And I guess people don't know, know those two. 
Uh, but <laughs> now we have <laughs> we have DJ Khaled. We have DJ Khaled putting this on the map. Isn't that awesome? So that's you know we those are our representatives, <laughs> Jesus and DJ Khaled. So. Uh, in fact, when they came out with the New Testament, they were like, another one. <laughs> uh, we the best. We the best. Um, but uh, yeah, my, my great grandma is from Bethlehem. And um, sometimes I, I tell people, it's like, oh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I'm like, yeah, that's the one for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, grew up in the, in the, you know, she knew the three wise men from Dunder Mifflin in Scranton. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's interesting that, you know, you know, most people in America would know Bethlehem is the birthplace of Jesus, but, but wouldn't be able to point it out on a map, which is maybe, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a complex geopolitical, you know, uh, situation. I understand it's not easy for people to know. My niece asked me last Christmas, my niece is five years old. She's like, where's Bethlehem? I, I, I gave her the simplest answer. You could have five-year-old. I said, well, technically it's in Palestine, uh, but America, we don't recognize Palestine as a country. So technically it's in the Palestinian territories. Uh, specifically the West Bank, not the Gaza Strip, of course. Um, uh, before that, it was uh, part of Britain and Palestine. Before that, the Ottoman Empire. Um, and before that, a conquest during the Crusades. Before that, a different conquest during the Crusades. Before that, a different conquest during the Crusades. Before that, a different conquest during the Crusades. And before that, the Canaanites, of course. And before that, the dinosaurs, presumably, if you believe this. Um, of course, you argue that it still is in Israel, technically, because Israel technically occupies the West Bank. But of course, Israel will deny that because that is illegal under international law, under many counts, don't tell the UN. JK, they already know, but it's a <laughs> very complex situation, but essentially that's where Jesus was born. So Merry Christmas. So that's the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then she was like, she was like, okay, well, is Santa Claus real? I'm like, 100% that guy is real. <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, what are you getting me for Christmas? Are you, are you kidding? I, I just gave you the gift of Palestine. You know, like, what more do you want? People usually pay to see my shows. I gave it to you free of charge, you know? <laughs> like, free Palestine? I was like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I did that. I did that bit last year back in real times when we could do it in front of audience members. And, and some guy came up to me after and he was like, don't do political material. It really divides the crowd. I was like, well, I've never heard something so obvious in my life. Um, like I didn't, <laughs> everybody loves political material, just not at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, right. You just got to wait your turn till they say what you like. And then you agree, <laughs> shut up for the rest of it. You know? And he's like, well, you should trust me because I'm a magician. I said, what did you just say to me? <laughs> like, trust me I'm a magician. I never heard that trust me i do tricks for a living believe it yeah. um, so it's like really dividing the crowd is when uh you saw the woman in half i think that's dividing your crowd <laughs> and then he's like well you know you're talking about israel palestine stuff and i don't think you're building any bridges i was like who said i'm trying to build bridges you know like <laughs> i'm palestinian tunnels so, <laughs> it's like a bridge, but you don't know that it's going on. You know what I'm saying? So, I guess what I'm saying is we're more connected than you know. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, I uh, I went to college for this. I majored in math. That's why I do stand up now. <laughs> yeah, I'm a math major, uh, and uh, you know people don't really appreciate math as much as I would like them to. Uh, there there was like a time when Western culture really did like math. It was a long time ago. It was ancient <laughs> Greece. Anybody remember that time? Um, I missed the train by a few thousand years. Uh, <laughs> math. Cause like if you were good at math in ancient Greece, you were the who's who like Pythagoras, that guy was crushing it, you know? <laughs> right. And you guys know who Pythagoras was Arabs. You're smart. You get math, but I'll say this around the country. Be like, was that a dinosaur? <laughs> no. like, Pythagorean theorem is something we all had to learn to graduate high school. That's how serious that theorem was. Can you imagine when that theorem just dropped? You know, like, <laughs> That was his white album, you know, like he could, <laughs> he could take whoever he wanted, just go up to a girl, like, what's up, girl, you like triangles? Oh my God, Pythagoras. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Always knew how to make conversation because he came from the right angle, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Pythagoras, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was, you know, he, he, he took Pythag, you know, Pythagoras, he was, um, they said he once had an affair with a woman who was 80 years old, which is it was crazy, like. 
He even once said, he said, women to me are like triangles. If she's less than 90, she's a cutie. <laughs> um, just got to use that math degree somehow. Um, I'm sorry that there's uh, somebody in the back. My sister, she clearly doesn't care that I'm doing this show. <laughs> anyway, um, I've been feeling really good lately. I've been eating plant-based. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that means, it means I eat only plants or animals that eat plants. <laughs> um, <laughs> there just has to be a plant in the food chain for it to be based from plants. I know vegans claim that, like, I eat plant based. Like, no, if a chicken eats some plants, it's a plant based chicken. And if I eat the chicken, I'm based from chicken. Therefore, I'm based from plants. QED. That's my math. <laughs> um, you know, I could eat a vegan and still be plant based. You know, <laughs> I would. <laughs> probably delicious like if i had to eat a human you know like i'm not i'm not gonna like hunt a vegan but if one died you know that's good grass-fed meat <laughs> <laughs> How expensive but uh i've been doing intermittent fasting as well for those of you not familiar with intermittent fasting it's like this cool trendy thing in hollywood basically um uh what i do is i i i'll finish a meal and then i won't eat again until the next time that i eat so I eat intermittently. You know I'm saying like sometimes I'm eating and sometimes I'm not, um, basically. And then I do one really long fast at the end of the day, uh, for which like I sleep for all of pretty much, and um, and then I wake up and I break the fast with a special meal that I call break fast. So, yeah, it's a Hollywood thing. Don't worry if it's like too complex or whatever, but. Um, <laughs> I'm not a very adventurous guy. My friend asked me last year, he's like, Sam, you want to go skydiving with me? I know a guy who does it on the cheap. I was like, no, that's definitely. Me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can call me bougie, but if I skydive, I want a name brand parachute behind me. <laughs> I want it to pop open and see Gucci with star studded diamonds. <laughs> falling out of the helicopter and see Kirkland's signature. Don't give me that. <laughs> Kirkland. <laughs> but, uh, anyways. I, I I like these Zoom things, but people like they get a really close glimpse of your face, and people often like they be like, "Whoa, Sammy, you look tired. Have you not like slept in like weeks? Look at those rings under your eyes. Like they're like, why are you like that's my face. Leave it alone. You know, <laughs> people always say that. I'm like, look, look look at those rings. Like it's called being <laughs> Middle Eastern. You know, <laughs> like that's that these our rings are. That's how you know it's us. Like Middle Easterners look like sleep deprived Mexicans. You know. <laughs> 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 that was a good um, <laughs> but uh but yeah no it's a, it's a good time to be middle eastern because if you know there's this term that people throw around a lot cultural appropriation you guys have heard of it right mm -hmm. but if anybody ever accuses me that like sammy what you're doing is cultural appropriation all i gotta be is like oh yeah do you eat hummus shut up you know <laughs> like, <laughs> conversation over and i know people are sometimes like actually i don't eat hummus like well you probably also don't use the term cultural appropriation <laughs> anybody who has that term in their vernacular has a tub of red pepper hummus in their fridge right now <laughs> um one time i was eating hummus in front of my black friend she's like hummus that's white people stuff i was like what <laughs> how did they take that that is crazy like that happens with like a bunch of things like oh i'm going for a hike oh that's white people stuff like really that's mm -hmm. human right just going in nature Oh, you're doing yoga? That's white people stuff. No, it's not. It's for me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's not white people stuff. She's like, all right, whatever. I'm going to church. I'm like, Jesus, that's Arab people stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been so much fun. I'm really glad that we did this. Um, before I get out of here, I just want to say that, you know, I, I appreciate you showing up and supporting live comedy. It really makes a big difference for us. And you know, cheers me up. I, this has been kind of a rough week for me. I, at the beginning of the week, I found out my neighbors were stealing my Wi-Fi. And uh, yeah, I know. That's like, Wi-Fi is like all we have now. You know? <laughs> like you can take our right to go in public without a mask, but you cannot take our Wi-Fi. <laughs> you can take my wife before you take my Wi-Fi. <laughs> Side note, though, Borat's back, so we can save my wife for another few months. <laughs> Good thing. Yeah, but it sucked to find out my neighbors were seeing the Wi-Fi. It hurt. You know, I wanted them to log off. So I didn't want to confront them because of the social distancing and I'm a wussy. So instead, for one day, for one day, I changed the network name to ISIS. That's all I did. <laughs> <laughs> and they logged off right away. It works so well. Oh, my God. No one's going to click yes on do you want to join 
ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Amber, for having me. All right. Thanks, Sammy. That's Sammy Obeyed, another hilarious Palestinian. Please make sure you support all the comics and make sure that you support the Palestinian American Coalition of San Francisco, who has done so much great work putting this together. I just, before I continue into my set, I just want to recognize a few people out there. Of course, our main man, Samir Bendek, who puts together a lot of these things in the Bay Area. And uh, yes, big hand for him. And then, of course, we have uh, Diala Shihadi. She's been on the back end, kind of making sure all the technical stuff is going where she's doing a great job. And of course, Nadia Harara, another great uh, volunteer out there in San Francisco. Thanks to everybody out there in the world. I'm sure I'm missing a lot more people, but they really worked hard on this particular event. Well, listen, man, we have uh, just me left. That's it. Uh, it's just, you know what, uh, Mike, can you introduce me real quick so I at least feel like I got introduced on a stage? Can we go to Mike Ismail for a second, please? All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the stage right now, your headliner for the evening. Uh, he has uh, produced shows all over the world, including uh, Palestine, the very first comedy festival in Palestine, and of course, the Dearborn Comedy Festival. Please welcome Ahmed Zahir. Hey! <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining. We are here at the Palestinian Cultural Day with the Palestinian <laughs> Coalition of San Francisco. A big hand for all the comedians that came up here before you. Marina Riyadh, Mike Ismail, Sammy Obeid, and of course, Mejdi Ferris. Thanks to everybody for joining. Well, listen, I wish I could be out there with all of you in San Francisco. Unfortunately, I'm here in Dearborn, the Arab Disneyland, talking to all of you. And um, I am I am Palestinian, uh, like I tell always tell people I'm Palestinian like Jesus. And like Sammy said, because we got to remind people, all right, white people think Jesus was from South Carolina. He wasn't. He's one of us. All mm -hmm. right. He didn't look like Brad Pitt. He kind of looked like uh, can you put the can you put the th camera on Michael for a second? All right. Put the <laughs> camera on Michael. All right. Yeah, uh, where is, yeah, like, okay, they put the camera on Michael, yeah, th m not Mike Ismail, the other Michael, the one, the, 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 the one that looks like a terrorist, this one over here, yeah, this one, yeah, yeah, that's what Jesus looked like, all right, that's what Jesus looked like, Jesus looked like one of us, all right, <laughs> didn't look, didn't look like Brad Pitt, and so look, <laughs> I am, uh, I am very happy, but uh, we do have to do a lot of work, that's the one problem I have as a Palestinian, is that no matter how famous I get, no matter how many millions of views on YouTube or Facebook or to WhatsApp groups I might ever get, <laughs> <laughs> you can never be the most famous Palestinian of all time. Never. All right. Jesus messed that up for everybody. All right? He just did too much. You can never be. We do have a lot of work to do in between, all right? I mean, Jesus is the most, it really, we have a lot of work to, because it kind of goes like uh, Jesus, uh, DJ Khaled. It's a big drop, big <laughs> drop off in the middle. We have a lot of work to do, you know? Love your enemies, don't play yourself, you know? So we really have, <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of work to do in the middle there, a lot of work. But um, look, I am uh, happy to be, Doing comedy, especially in this thing, the year was 2020, and I've been talking about Arabs not being white for a long time, and once again, we didn't get our box on the census form. Uh, we're getting some kind of recognition this year, but we still don't have our box. I'm really pissed off, because we're not white. We're not white. I keep saying this around the world. We deserve our own box. So all of you out there agree that we Arabs deserve our own box? Woo! Yes? Yes. Oh, yes. I want to start. I, we're not white. I want to start a rally right here today at the Palestinian American Cultural uh, Coalition in San Francisco. Let's say it with me. We're not white. We're not, <laughs> we're white. not white. That's right. We're, we're not, not white. white. We're not white. Listen, <laughs> we are different. We're not white. Uh, I hang out with white people. We, um, <laughs> we, uh, uh, we, we buy houses different than white people. Okay. White people are very logical when they go buy a house. You know, they look at the house. Are the taxes low? Are the neighborhoods safe? Are the schools good? Not us. We have different criteria when we buy a house. Look, I really like the house. It's beautiful. How far is Costco? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're different. We're different. 
<laughs> we give direct we give directions. We give directions different than white people. White people give very specific directions. They're very specific with their directions. You know, you're gonna you're gonna go down five miles and then you're gonna take a right on Route 352, and then at the third uh, uh, stop sign, you're gonna take a left, and then our house will be five houses down. The address is 732, it's a white house, you can't miss it. Very specific with their, not Arabs, we we give, I remember one time when I was asking my uncle for directions to somebody's house when I was a kid, it's just, it's just not the same, you know? It's, okay, you're gonna go like four to five kilo. I'm like, what the, what the hell is it? <laughs> I grew up in America, I don't know what a kilo is. What is that, like 75 miles? I don't know what a kilo is. <laughs> You're gonna go down like four or five kilo, and then you are gonna see a tree, a very big tree. Okay, big tree. Uh, you're gonna take a right, and then you're gonna go down like maybe three, four stop sign. I don't know, I'm not sure. I don't really stop. Okay. Then you're gonna take a left, and then you're gonna drive down, and you are gonna see a black BMW and a white Mercedes. That is my <laughs> <laughs> that's how we tell people how, where we live, you know. And then you made it. You yeah, made that's it. how you tell people where you live, you know. That's how we describe people, you know. That's how we describe people, you know. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, that's how we describe. You know, do you do you know do you know uh, do you know um, uh, Mejdi Ferris? No, I don't know Mejdi Ferris. Who's Mejdi Ferris? Mejdi Ferris is a comedian out of DC. You know, Mejdi Ferris. No, I don't know who Mejdi Ferris. You know Mejdi Ferris. You know his dad's a doctor, his mom's a teacher. You know, you know you know Mejdi, you know Mejdi Ferris. You grew up down the street from him. No, I don't know Mejdi. Mejdi Ferris. He drives a white Range Rover. Oh yeah, Mejdi Ferris. Why don't you say <laughs> with the white Range Rover? You know, <laughs> this, this is how we describe people. I know we're not white. We're not white. I know we're not white, man, because we also have a problem in our culture. Um, we are, we like to stare. <laughs> we're a very staring culture. We stare at other people. We're starists. We, <laughs> we stare. Like we, white people don't stare. They, they, they don't, they, it's rude to them. We stare. Like you ever, you ever stop at a traffic light? Like if you stop at a traffic light in America and you know you feel like the guy next to you is staring at you, you know, you look at him and he stops staring. He gets embarrassed. He starts looking for it again. If you're in Palestine and you stop at a traffic light and the guy's staring at you and you look at him, he just looks at you and goes, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, do I know you? Are we related? You know, it's a pro we don't teach our kids not to stare, you know? Hmm. If you walk, if you walk up and like a little white kid is staring at you, what does his mom say? Tommy, don't stare. That's rude. What does the Arab mom say to you? You know, send them al ammu. Say hello to them. Say hello. You know, we don't we don't teach them that staring is wrong. Comedy. I mean, we are not white. We deserve <laughs> our own box. We're not white. We're also not Middle Eastern. I heard Sammy say Middle Eastern. We're not Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern is just the lazy white people way to describe us, okay? That's all, was, you know. Really, the word Middle Eastern came from this American guy who said, I went east, and somewhere in the middle, <laughs> I found these people. It's just lazy. We're Arabs. We're very proud that we're Arabs, but we get a lot of bad raps. Uh, people think we hate Jews. We don't hate Jews. Uh, in fact, we like Jews so much that we <laughs> announce when someone's Jewish when we like him, you know, that's how much we love Jews. You know, every, every Arab, you know, has that uncle, you know, like, him. plus it just doesn't come out right when we say things before, before they say they like them, they don't, we don't hate Jews, just the way our uncles say it, it just doesn't, it doesn't come out right. You know, you, everybody has this Arab uncle, right? I don't hate Jew as person. <laughs> um... <laughs> But when there is a lot of them, and I'm like, no, that's racist. You need to stop. You know, he doesn't mean it like that. It just comes out wrong. You know, it just comes out wrong. But we name, we name them when we like them. Everyone, right? My dad used to do that all the time. You know, this is Jerry Seinfeld. He's very funny. And he's Jewish. You're like, mm -hmm. all right. What's, what's that have to do with anything? <laughs> <laughs> I really like this Bernie Sanders, you know. He's very, very good. And you know, he's Jewish. I'm like, yeah, we all know, you know, we all know. And you saying it doesn't make you sound any better. 
you know. But that's what I do whenever I talk to white people and tell us about, you know, I tell them I'm Palestinian like Jesus. He's amazing. He's the most famous man in the history of the world. And he's Jewish. You know, <laughs> so just want to make sure people know. But we're not white. We're not white. I know we're not white because when I go back home, I see the way people tell stories in Palestine. And people tell stories. Look, Palestinians tell stories. They start the story with what should be like the end of the story, but to them, it's just a small detail. You know, you, you, when people say stories back home, you know, like, okay, so I'm walking down the street with my AK-47, okay? And then mm -hmm. I'm like, no, wait a second. Why are you carrying an AK-47? I need to know why you're carrying an AK-47. That's just real normal, you know. And then I still this gear, her jeans. Oh my God. I'm like, all right, that's the best part of your story. Why are you carrying AK-47? This is the way things happen back home. But I always see here, I have tough times because my life sounds like a lie, okay? My life just sounds like a lie, especially the TSA people, you know? I got pulled aside in TSA like maybe, uh, uh, you know, about six months ago, and they just knew my whole history right before COVID. They pulled me aside and they said, Mr. Uh, Czar, um, we see here that in the last six months, you have been to uh, Florida, Texas, Massachusetts, California, Illinois, Michigan, Washington. Why are you doing all this traveling? I'm like, well, actually, I'm a stand-up comedian. And they said to me, uh, Mr. Czar, you know it is a crime to lie to a federal agent. <laughs> I said, um, well, actually, I'm also a law professor. They said, all right, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say. <laughs> the whole life sounds like a lie. The whole life sounds like a lie. But you got to feel bad for white people. Really. I mean, you got to feel bad for them. They have had it tough in America, you know, um, especially in the last 10 or 15 years. I mean, they do overperform in some things. I mean, white guys are only like 33% of the population, but they're like 95% of mass shooters. So they're overperforming in the mass shooter category. They're doing very, very well in the mass shooter category. Um, and if you notice, you never notice when they go after the white, the, this white mass shooter, they always go to his neighborhood and they always ask like his neighbors about him. And his neighbors always say the same thing. We're so shocked by this. <laughs> this is such a surprise to us. You know? This doesn't happen in Dearborn, by the way. When Dearborn and when an Arab guy does something crazy, nobody says that. You know, people go, no, this is not. No, he's been talking about doing this for a very long time. You know, we are, uh, <laughs> we are not surprised at all. <laughs> Actually, we are surprised it took this long before he did this. You know? <laughs> And white people always say, we never thought this would happen in our community, even though their community is the only community this shit happens in. It doesn't happen <laughs> in other communities. They're the community that this happens in, all right? And they have a different definition of a good neighbor. You know, he's such a good neighbor. I haven't seen him for five years. <laughs> I think that's an amazing neighbor, all right? I live in Dearborn, Michigan, all right? All my neighbors are Arab, all right? If Fatima doesn't see Khadija for like 45 minutes, she calls the cops. I think she's dead. <laughs> Somebody come over. She's supposed to be smoking on the veranda right now. I don't know where she is. <laughs> How about we never thought this would happen in our community? What a beautiful, nice, white thing to be able to say. I, I live in Dearborn. 90% of the businesses on my street are Arab. When a doctor gets arrested over here for 75 counts of Medicare fraud, <laughs> when they interview me on CNN the next day, I do not say, I never thought that, that that's exactly the kind of shit that I think would happen in my neighborhood, all right? Because it happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> gotta feel bad for white people man they never told them where they were from you know they never told them that white people the whole idea of america was you come here you forget where you're from and you become american and that was okay when it was just white people and black people and indians you know then it was okay but then all these other things started showing up people got all shades of brown and all kinds of cultures and like in the last 20 or 30 years it it, it became cool to be something 
And so now white people want to be something and they do this, this ancestry test, you know, Sammy was talking about it, Mike was talking about it, this ancestry test of it, you know, and they, they get this pie chart and they like to, they just pick their, pick their race. <laughs> they just want to, they're, cause they want to be something, 116th black, 132nd native American, you know, it's just, cool. by the way, Palestinians, we don't need to do the ancestry.com test. We know where we're from. We're very proud of our culture. Also, listen, Palestine has been, you know, sort of um, invaded by every culture for the last 2000 years because God chose Palestine. So everybody has, has, has visited Palestine. And so we look like everything. I don't even want to know what my ancestry.com thing says, but I know <laughs> that I'm Palestinian. I always say everybody came to Palestine and everybody came in Palestine. So we look <laughs> like everything. <laughs> so, so we look like everything. <laughs> That's when Aima was laughing at that joke, but her husband was like, that is not very funny. I, just, I don't, uh, I didn't understand, but it sounded good, and I don't think we are going to talk about that. I show. do understand. <laughs> I do understand that. Oh, you do? Okay, sorry. Damn, Marcus. <laughs> no problem. Big, big problem. Yeah, of me now. <laughs> You're gonna I mean, uh, look, I, 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 I feel... I just, I just visiting you. Oh, okay. English only. Okay, thank you. All right. So... Um, <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> but uh, listen, have you seen these Ancestry.com tests? It's like the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's all made for white people, all right? And when you get these, these pie charts, you know it's made for white people because the pie chart will tell you like 7% from East Scotland and 3% from this zip code in London, and uh, 5% African, you know, like the whole thing, just the whole thing, mm -hmm. it's just one big place to them. You've seen these commercials, it's the dumb, white people, our whole life we thought we were German, and then I took my ancestry.com test and I found out that we're 21% Italian. And now we go to the Olive Garden and we eat spaghetti. You know, it's like, it's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, that's not how it works. All right. I saw there was one commercial where there's this white lady standing in front of all these artifacts and she, she gets all this. My name is Kim. I took my ancestry.com test and what surprised me the most is I found out that I'm 26% Native American. I had no idea. <laughs> All right. Now, I don't have I don't have a PhD in genetics or biology or anything like that, but like 26%, that's a lot. Okay? That's like a whole grandparent. <laughs> I mean, I know where my grandmother's from. I know where my grandmother's 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 from. Kim had no idea. And let me tell you something. If you're white and they didn't tell you that your grandmother is Native American, that's not a good story. All right? Something really <laughs> bad happened in the history of your family. I, I'm waiting for the Ancestry.com commercial where somebody is happy to find out that they're Arab. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you're going to see that commercial. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Our whole life, we thought we were Puerto Rican. And then, <laughs> and I took my Ancestry.com test, and what surprised me the most is I found out that we're 26% Arab. And now we go to the airport early. You know, <laughs> never going to see it. So we are not we are not white. And I'm kind of happy that we're not white. Um, but I notice, um, I notice the differences between here and America. I, I notice them even when I go back home, you know, I, I was um, actually about, I think five years ago, I was with Pal in Palestine with uh, Mike, uh, Mike Ismail, and I was doing shows in uh, Ramallah and I wanted to go do a show in uh, Gaza, but of course they didn't let us into Gaza, you know? And, um, and so we figured it out where I would do a show on Skype from Ramallah to a bunch of young people in Gaza. And um, they all understood English because they all had visited America before. Now I live in Detroit. For a lot of people who don't know, Detroit used to have 2 million people and now it has 700,000 people. So there's a lot of abandonment, a lot of really rundown areas in Detroit. 
So I did this whole comedy show from Ramallah to Ghazi. And after the show, one of the girls wanted to ask me a question. And she said, you live in America? I said, yes. She said, where do you live in America? I said, Detroit. And she said, oh. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that I came to America and I went everywhere in America <laughs> and America is a beautiful country and then I came to Detroit <laughs> and I saw Detroit <laughs> and I said to myself what can the people of Gaza do <laughs> to help the people of Detroit? <laughs> so if you want to understand how messed up Detroit is, all you got to know is that people from Gaza walk around and they go, wow, this is pretty messed up, huh? So like, <laughs> people live here? This is disgusting, you know? <laughs> so why... While we are all having fundraisers in Detroit for Gaza, in Gaza, they are having fundraisers <laughs> for Detroit. <laughs> let us send money there. They need us. Well, before I go, let me say this. Please, everybody out there in the world, support PAC. Give them money. Make sure they can put on events like this because one day when we get out of all of this and they want to actually fly us somewhere, uh, please make sure they have the resources to do it so that they can present our culture to the whole world because we need everybody to know how beautiful our culture is. So whether it's PAC or whether it's other organizations in your area out there, support them. I know you all have money. When I come to your cities, I see your cars. So please make sure that you give money to all of these organizations so that they can all keep doing their work and support the, the real hard work of people like Samir and Nadia and, and uh, Diala who are out there putting their time out. So, and to the comedians, the Palestinian comedians who came here tonight, they frankly don't have anything else to do. But for all, all the other volunteers, <laughs> please make sure that, uh, that you really support uh, PAC. That's the first reason I do events like this. The second reason I do events like this and I make sure whether it's live or on Zoom and hopefully there's millions of people watching this event is I wanna make sure that I am as present in our communities as I can possibly be because I am now uh, 43 years old and I am uh, still <laughs> single. That's right, still <laughs> single. <laughs> That's too much. I know. Your Honor. <laughs> so for a three years old, that's too much in our country. Can you can you bring them on the screen, Diala, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Murar? Um, should should I should I, I'm, I don't know your first name. What's your first name? Shukri. Shukri. Amu Shukri. Should I get married? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Khalti Naima. Should I get married? Definitely. How how long have you guys been married? 37 years. Why did you look at him? Okay, 37 years. All right. 37 years. Okay. I mean, look, here's what scares me. I'm going to Here's what scares Go me. Go ahead. <clears throat> I see people who have been married for a long time, okay? And I see how they talk about each other. And it never sounds good for the man. Okay? <laughs> Here, here's, here's my problem. Like, I don't know... Shukri and Naima very well. I might have met them once or twice, but we don't really know each other very well. But I know exactly how I they talk three, about it. I saw you three times already. Okay, let me do my job. Okay, thank you. So I know exactly. <laughs> I, know, I know exactly how they talk about each other. Okay, like if you ask Shukri and Naima how they met. Wait, are you guys cousins? No, <laughs> no. we're not. It's okay. That's one way for all the white I people guess. watching. For all, the white that, people out there, for all the white people out there watching, <laughs> sometimes we marry airport. our cousins. Okay, for all the white people out there watching, sometimes we marry our cousins. It's not a big deal. It just means you know that they come from a good family. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. 
All right. In fact, listen, but for white people out there, when you come to our weddings, please don't say the kind of stuff you say at white people weddings because you can't say it at our weddings, especially if it's a cousin wedding. OK, <laughs> you can't just walk into an Arab wedding and just start asking people, you know, are you here with the bride or the groom? Yes. <laughs> OK. <laughs> who, who do you know here? Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> How did you guys meet? Well, my grandfather um, is her grandfather. So uh, <laughs> we have no <laughs> um, But um, if you ask Shukri and Naima, if you happened? ask Shukri and Naima how they met, Shukri will say what men say. The first time <laughs> I saw Naima, she was the most beautiful girl. <laughs> I have ever seen in my life ever forever That's and I knew <laughs> and I knew I wanted to be with her forever and if you ask Naima about the first time she met Shukri she will tell you what women say well the first time I met Shukri I never thought I would end up with somebody like that. <laughs> he grew on me like a disease. He grew on me. And here we are. Look, they froze. Did they freeze for everybody else too? <laughs> I don't know if they froze. Go put, is the camera still on them? They froze. Is it still on me and them? They froze, which means... I hope Shukri did not break the iPad at all when it was on. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get it back on me. I'm afraid what happened in the Murad household. <laughs> but uh, listen, the problem I have now is that, oh, okay, the Murad household is back. What oh, okay, whatever. We'll get back to them in a second. Um this is what uh, uh, this is what happens now in my life. Uh, Forty three and single, so uh, my um, mother believes that I'm uh, gay. Now, she <laughs> she does not have any evidence, okay, other than I'm forty three and single. It's all circumstantial evidence, okay. But my mom, my mom, one hundred percent. Uh, believes that I'm, uh, uh, that I'm gay. And we're here. We lost you. Okay. This is not a family <laughs> FaceTime video. Okay. I don't know why we have to keep explaining this to Arabs. It's not a family <laughs> FaceTime <laughs> where you just talk whenever you want to. It's a comedy show. We didn't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> I made you laugh. We're back. I made you laugh. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> We're here. Can you hear us? Yes. yes we, we can hear you. you. No, no, we can hear you. <laughs> Disaster. <laughs> so yeah. So my I'm 43. My mom thinks I'm gay. She 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 believes fully. That I'm gay, by the way. And not only does she believe I'm gay, she like has already gone, like my mom has already gone through all the five levels of grief, like this depression, anger, acceptance, bargaining. Like she's already gone through all of them without the trauma. Like I never came out. Okay. She didn't have, she had no initial trauma, but she's gone through all, she's already made it to acceptance. All right. She's already made it to acceptance. Like last year during June, I put a uh, rainbow flag on my Instagram because June was Pride Month. And, you know, just I believe we should sow solidarity with everybody. And, you know, we have gay Arabs too. And so I put it on. And she called me uh, about an hour later and she said, Ahmed, what is this on your Instagram? I said, well, mom, it's Pride Month and we should show solidarity with everybody. And she says, people are commenting very mean. I said, yes, people are very mean on Instagram. She said, so this is how you are coming out and telling everybody that you are gay? I was like, no, mom. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what's happening. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to comment and tell them that I am your mother and I love you no matter what. I was like, no, mom. <laughs> that is not necessary. <laughs> now she treats me, now my mom treats me like, uh, you ever watch like Law and Order when they have the guy in the, uh, in the, in the room 
and they already know that he did it and they're just trying to get him to confess you know <laughs> this is how this is how my mom is like that detective in law and order with like her partner my dad is the partner all right <laughs> And she just walks into the kitchen whenever I visit their house. And that's what she does. Just like the guys on Law and Order, you know, look, we already know. <laughs> we already know. We have all the evidence. We have your fingerprints. We have your DNA. <laughs> okay. We have the video from the store. Okay. We already know that you did it. Then she tries this, you know, you will feel better when you tell me. Okay? <laughs> you will feel better when you tell me. This is the games that she tries now. But now I've realized that I'm more American than I thought. I'm Palestinian and I love being Palestinian. We have a great culture. We have a great culture. We, 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 we always teach our kids who we are and we have a lot of kids. That's the one reason Israelis will never get rid of us, okay? We outlove them very much, okay? They will not get rid of us. That's why when you go to Palestine, you see somebody, you see, you find a guy, be, how many kids do you have? He says, one, two, three, four, five. You say, how old are they? He says, one, two, three, four, five. So we, we have a lot of kids. You're not gonna get rid of us. So for all of people watching out there, and I wanna welcome, as I finish up here, all the guests, who have watched us tonight, Palestinians from around the country, Arabs from around the country, uninvited guests from the FBI and Israel. We are very happy <laughs> that you have all joined us here tonight to oh, learn a little bit about our culture because we do have a beautiful culture. Not like in America where somebody doesn't even know their history and they stand in front of a building and they say, this building is 50 years old. Isn't that really old? And then you go to Jerusalem and you're eating a falafel sandwich and you say to the owner of the restaurant, tell me about this restaurant. And he says, well, Jesus ate right there. Okay, Jesus. that's old. <laughs> But I realize this, I realize when I go to Palestine, though, sometimes I'm still American because it is difficult in Palestine to be a single 43 year old heterosexual man. It's very hard to be an American version of that. Because in America, if a man and a woman are walking down the street holding hands, it's totally normal. If two <laughs> men are walking down the street holding hands, it's kind of weird. Back home. If a man and a woman are walking down the street holding hands, it's kind of weird. weird. It's weird. <laughs> if two men are walking down the street holding hands, it's totally normal. All right? <laughs> now, now, I didn't know that. So I was walking down the street in Jerusalem with a friend of mine, and he wanted to talk to me, so he grabbed my hand. But I'm American. So I was like, hey, man, stop it. He was like, no, no, it's okay. I was like, it's not okay. Don't touch me. He said, no, 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 you can hold my hand. I said, I don't want to hold your hand. And then he gave me the most Palestinian Arab answer I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> he said, come on, hold my hand. What's wrong? Are you gay? <laughs> <laughs> so I held his hand. <laughs> I held his hand and I started kissing him too, just so everybody knew. <laughs> All right, everybody out there in the world, we love you. Please put everybody back on the screen again. Thank you once again to Marina Riyadh and Mejdi Faris and Mike Ismail and Sami Obaid who has left us. But thank you to all the crowd and the audience for being patient with us. Shukri and Naima, please learn thank how you. to use Zoom. Thank you. And for everybody else out there. We Get love you. Please supporting. Please keep supporting Pack San Francisco, and we will see you Move soon. Thank California. you so much. Bye, everybody.
شرب البحر أو هبد السور لو سرقوا الهوى أو خنقوا النور ما ببيع العكا بالدنيا كلها ما ببدي الحاطي ولا بالسور المينا وكل البحرية الصبح وقمر الليل هيلا 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 ونهار الغرب وليل الويل هيلا 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 لو شمس الصبح وقمر الليل هيلا 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 ونهار الغرب وليل الويل هيلا 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 اخذوا روحي على نجم سين انا روحي بزواري بابا خور انا روحي بزواري بابا شرب البحر أو هد السور لو سرقوا الهوى أو خلقوا النور ما ببيع العكا بالدنيا كلها ما ببدي الحاتي ولا بالسور لو رمل الشط الما بنعت إلى هيلا إلى هيلا صدفات المخلوقة على الأد إلى هيلا إلى هيلا لو رمل الشط الما بنعد هلا 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 صدفات المخلوقة علت هلا 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 مسحات الدهر انصار وجد ركعوا لي ما بترك هالسوء ما بترك ما بترك هالسوء لو شربوا البحر أو هدوا السوء لو سرقوا الهوى أو خنقوا ما ببيع العكا بالدنيا كلها ما ببدي الحارتي ولا بالسور ما ببدي الحارتي ولا بالسور لو شربوا البحر Look what just came in the mail. These beautiful illustrated cards. This is Nazareth. Wow. This is Jerusalem. Gorgeous. And this is Ramallah. Look at the beautiful olive trees. Wow, who made these? These were illustrated by Rowan Anani. All the proceeds from this sale will go to Jaffa Cultural Center programs at Balata Refugee Camp in Nablus, Palestine. Where can I get them? You can get them at zawaya.org. There's also blank inside of the cards, so you can send these to friends and family to use during upcoming holidays, or you can write to friends and family. Wow. I love your mask. Where is it from? Well, I got these from Zawaya.org also. There's three really? different kinds. Oh. This one, this one. So beautiful. And this one. I love those. We need your help. Please, our Ramallah cousins, please help us out. Thank you.